Hey, this is Matt with Mountain Stream Teas, and today we are going to go over some of the rules to get the best possible brew for you. So one of the most common questions I get is, what is the best way to brew the tea? Now, one of the most important things, I'll stay right at the start, there is no best way to brew the tea. There is the best way to brew the tea for you and for your own personal taste. So before we get started, don't worry about messing it up. Don't worry about offending anybody. Don't worry about doing it the wrong way. As long as you're doing it with attention and with respect, you're doing it the right way. Now, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go over some of these variables, right? I'm going to talk about how to brew tea, what the, you know, the, the basic variables, what happens when you change the variables. And then I'm going to come in a little bit closer and I'm going to give you some examples of the different vessels that you would use to brew tea. Now, if you're sort of already a hardcore teener, this might not be uh, the most useful for you. But those of us who are new to the tea game and trying to figure out why is this tea so bitter? This will help you out a lot. Let's get started. So what are we looking at when we're brewing tea? We're looking at, well, basically three things. Water, the tea, and the vessel, right? So those are the three main variables, right? So what can you do to change all that? Well, you can do the, the tea amounts, right? How much tea you actually put into the, your vessel. You can do how much time the tea is in the hot water, right? So, or cold water for that matter. So how much time it's in the water. You can change the water temperature, right? So you can change how the different, how much, uh, what the temperature is high or low. You can change the water amount and that goes to your vessel. You can have a bigger vessel or a smaller vessel. And over here we got the tea shape, but we'll get to that in a minute because that's sort of the hardest one to really wrap your head around. But let's look at, look at this one, right? Over here, we got our variables. Over here, we got stronger. Over here, we got weaker. Now, I'm using those terms. I'm not putting value judgments on those terms, right? Stronger means more flavors in general, more bitterness, more stringency, uh, more bite, but also maybe more aftertaste, more florals, more sweetness, things like that, right? Not a value judgment. Weaker usually means less bitterness and astringency, more subtle floral sweetness, more flowing flavors. Again, not a value judgment. So, tea amount, this one's easy. The more tea you have, right, the more tea you put in, the stronger your brew is going to be. The less tea you put in, the weaker your tea is going to be. Easy. Time. This one. It's starting to get a little bit more complicated, but in general, it's the same thing. The more time that your tea is in the water, the stronger the taste is going to be of that tea. The less time it's in the water, the weaker the tea is going to be. Now let's move on to water temperature. Now water temperature starts to get a little bit more complicated, but we'll get to that in a minute. In general, pretty easy, right? The hotter the water, the stronger it's going to be. The cooler the water, the weaker the brew is, the taste is, the flavor characteristics are going to be. Then we get to water amount. Now this one is where the gong fu style of making tea uh, that's, that's used in most sort of uh, uh, Han Chinese dominated cultures, that gong fu style of making tea, this is where the water amount really starts getting different if you're used to sort of the Western ways of brewing tea. But once again, in general, the stronger brew is with less water. And the more water you have, the weaker amount of tea. So let's just get into it. Let's just do something really, really easy, right? Let's say you brew the Western way. And you have a teapot, and you put the tea in the teapot, and you add in the boiling water, and you leave it to steep for 10 minutes, and you drink the tea, and you go, wow, that's way too bitter. I don't like this. Ah, what do I do? Is it me, or is it the tea? Well, 
your brew is too strong. So how do we change the brew? How do we make it so that it's not as strong? Well, we take a look at our variables. So number one, what you can do is you have less tea, right? So you got your teapot, you add it in the hot water, cut the tea in half, right? <clears throat> so say you put in, you know, <clears throat> five grams of tea, try three grams. Time. Well, you did 10 minutes. Now do five. See what happens. Your water temperature, if you're putting in boiling water and it was too strong, too bitter, take off the top. Leave the kettle aside for about five minutes. Put the top back on and try again. If you lower the temperature of the water, it's going to mitigate those really strong, bitter, and astringent flavors. Your water amount, I guess, well, this one, sort of in the Western way, I guess you could add more water, <laughs> you know, like you get a bigger pot. But, you know, this one we'll get into in a minute. Now, when you're brewing that way, this way, the T-shape doesn't really come into it too much. Okay, so it doesn't really come into it too much. But again, this one is complicated, and we'll get to that in a minute. Now, that's just the basics, right? So that's just the very, very, very basics. But if you start looking at the way that things are done, say in Taiwan, for example, when you're brewing tea in Taiwan, you're really doing this strangely, right? If you're looking at it from a Western perspective, because what you're doing is you're using a huge amount of tea relative to the size of the pot, right? So the amount of tea is super strong. The time is only like 30 seconds, right? So when you're doing a steep, and I'll show you the vessels in a minute, you're doing it, that steep for that time is only like 30 seconds, right? Your water temperature is really, really high, which is giving you that stronger brew, right? Much, much stronger brew. And your water amount is actually quite low. So you've got a little bit amount of tea, hot water, your water temperature is high, your water amount is low, but you're only doing it for a very, very short period of time. Now something like this. Now this I bought at the local grocery store. This is nothing special. This costs about $10. But this is exactly what I just talked about. In here, <clears throat> you'd put five grams of tea, which is a lot of tea, right? You're putting in a lot of tea in this little thing right here. You add boiling water to it. You let it sit for 30 seconds. And then you pour it out. Now, what that 30 second first steep is going to taste like actually de depends really heavily on T-shape. We'll get to that in a second. But it's going to be on the weaker side. Now, if you really like really, really strong tea, you could do something like that. Same thing. And you're going to leave it in for a minute. And then there's going to be more of the stronger flavors. Or if you want basically tea espresso, you can put it in a little thing like this and leave it for five minutes. And then you can use it as paint thinner afterwards in general. But what you're looking at here is a much more versatile way to brew your teas. Right? Again, the Western tradition, the Red Betty, the big old pot. You put the tea in, you put the water in, burp, you drink it. Whereas when you're looking at sort of more the Taiwanese style, Chinese style, Japanese style of making teas, then you're dealing with specialized pots like this that really do up your ability to control the taste. Why don't we get closer? We'll come in. I'm going to move the camera a little bit. I'll show you some of the typical vessels of things of how to brew tea. And then I'll give you some tips about how to brew the best tea for you. All right, we're back. Now, what I have in front of me, this is by no means an exhaustive amount of tea shapes and tea vessels. But what I have in front of me are some of the more common ways that people would brew tea. I also have your, your standard black tea, a ball rolled oolong, a <clears throat> sort of strip oolong, and then a uh, loosely done white tea. And we'll talk about what happens with all of these teas as you brew them. But here you can see all of these teas, these teapots, these tea vessels, these brewing conveyances. As you look at them, they're all designed for different teas. Now, maybe in a future 
uh, episode or, or one of these, I'll go into the details of which pot is best for which type of tea. We don't have to worry about that right now. Point is, is all of these have different ways of messing with those variables that we talked about earlier. All right, so this one here, <clears throat> pretty standard. You've all seen these, right? You put the tea in the bottom and then you go like this, you pour it out. Okay, great. This one, it's got a wider, oops. Don't, don't worry, this is not an expensive. <laughs> it's not expensive at all. You can see it's got a wider, bigger base. So this is for uh, cooler water teas and things like that. Again, in a future episode, we might talk about that. This one here is what's called a B-Sai cup or a competition cup here in Taiwan. You put the tea in here, you leave this for four or five minutes, and then you would pour it out just like this. And then you have the classic gaiwan, right, where you can control and actually see the leaves open up. If you're a beginner, this is usually the best to start with, just because you can see how much water, you can see how much tea, you can see what the leaves are doing. You know, it's a little hard to pour, but you get it with practice. Now let's get into the T shape. And the T shape is super, 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 super important. Because when you're brewing the teas, the best way to think about it is surface area. The more water is touching the tea leaf, the faster and more intense the flavors are going to be extracted from those tea leaves. Okay, so to give you an example, black teas, right? So you've got sort of a black tea sort of thing that looks like that. It's all exposed. You add the hot water to a black tea and then much, much quickly, much, much faster than say other different types of teas, it's going to have its flavors extract, right? So with a black tea, generally speaking, if you do multiple steeps, the first and the second steep are gonna be the more intense. Then you get going to the third, fourth, fifth steep, those are gonna be less and less and less as you move along. If you look at the ball rolled oolongs, right, which are so, uh, so typical in Taiwan of the high mountain oolongs, those ones are completely different. Now think about it. You take this, this beautiful tea leaf, you roll it into a ball just like this, you add hot water to it, the first steep isn't gonna really do much. It's gonna open it up a little bit like this, but you're not really extracting a lot of flavor from it. The next steep, the second steep, it opens up a little bit more. You're gonna get a little bit more flavor from it, but you're not really gonna get the best flavor. Then the third steep, the whole thing opens up, and as it opens up, then you're getting all of the really strong, beautiful flavors that people love about those high mountain oolongs. And that's why usually when you're using sort of the Gong Fu method, the Gong Fu style of making high mountain oolongs, the third steep is the one that people enjoy the most. And then with these teas, you can sort of see what's going on, right? As, as, as you can see more of the leaf, you're able to see that as you brew it, you got to be a little bit more careful. Green tea is the perfect example of that, right? A good green tea, you can see the leaf, it's, you know, it's opened up. If you had a really hot, hot water to that green tea, you're getting a lot of bitterness and astringency in general because more of the flavor is being released faster. And hopefully this video will give you some of the tools that you can figure out if you brew a tea and then you don't like it, whether it's the tea's fault or whether it's your fault. So for example, you brew a tea, it's too weak. You go, what, what is this? This is just water. Well, I, I, I spent money on this. Why doesn't it taste like anything? Well, Maybe lower the amount of water that you use to brew the tea. Maybe up the water temperature. Maybe brew it for a longer period of time and see what happens. If there's still no flavor after you mess with those different variables, well, you can say pretty confidently, it's not me. This tea is not very good. Same thing with if it's too strong. Too strong, too bitter, astringent. Ah, it's paint thinner. Well, lower the temperature. Lower the time it's in the water. Increase the amount of water that it's brewed in. Play around with the variables. You'll be able to tell whether the tea is actually high quality or low quality. And it'll help you brew a very, very, very good tea for you. Okay, so that's it for today. If you like these videos, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. You can also visit mountainstreamteas.com to get some of the tea yourself. If you have any questions about this video, please let us know in the comments or get in touch. We're always available to answer your questions. Thanks for watching, 
and we'll see you next video. Thank <laughs> you.